821, Big 550 KTRS, McGraw Show. He'll be back on Thursday. John Carney filling in. Farah Fazal from News Channel 5 also along. And this is this has been enjoyable. It, it, the pleasure is mine. And is it true, really, that video killed the radio star? It is. But you know what that uh, band was that did <laughs> that song? <laughs> yes, what? Do, I don't remember the anymore. The Buggles. The Buggles. Yeah, and you know why it is significant but in I love history? That song. Mm-hmm. It was the first music video that MTV played. That's right. I do remember that. Back this. when they used to play music videos. But they're nothing ha- like that <laughs> anymore. You should go on Jeopardy, John. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd be great on Jeopardy. Maybe a copy of the home game at best. Uh, we talk TV. St. Louis Post-Dispatch television critic Gail Pennington joins us now. Gail, greetings. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hi. Good morning, Gail. Good morning. I didn't want to do it. I finally broke down and watched my last uh, um, Boardwalk Empire. I didn't want it to end. <laughs> How do you think? What do you think about the end? Did you were you satisfied? Uh, I was. They they wrapped up a lot. I thought it was extremely well done. I just feel bad that I'm not getting a weekly mini Martin Scorsese movie anymore. What are you going to replace it with in your life? Uh, wine. Wine. Okay, that would work. <laughs> you know, Ray Donovan is my other go-to, and that's done for a while. So I'm Homeland. Ca- I'm kind of floating. You know, I'm watching Homeland a little bit, but... Home, I'm out on Homeland. I'm smelling sharks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not pleased. So I'm kind of waiting for something. I know Newsroom's coming back. Why on earth would they call these the final episodes when they only had two seasons and they were great? Because it's the final season and it sucked. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I, now you we know, know, I worship Aaron Sorkin. The new, the West Wing was the greatest TV show ever, but the newsroom was so dumb. I and liked annoying. it. Wow, I liked it. I didn't like the relationship thing they felt they needed to follow with Jeff Which Daniel. Which was ninety five percent of the show. All right. Well, that's why you're the television critic, <laughs> and I'm not, because I don't know such things. Uh, Fox gives us Master Chef Junior. Have and you th- ever seen this? This is the cutest show ever. I haven't, but when I think warm and fuzzy and kids and cute, Gordon Ramsay does not come to mind. Well, in real life, he has four children, and he cooks with them all the time. He has a show in in Britain in which he cooks with his kids, and it's very cute. But this is sixteen children between eight and thirteen. They're t- they're so small they can't even see over the top of the of the, <laughs> the counter they're going to cook on in a lot of cases. But these kids will blow you away. They're such great cooks. This is seven o'clock Tuesdays on Fox. It's right. Master this is Chef season Junior. two, and I and I'm I know about it because I loved season one. And we get a kinder, gentler Gordon Ramsay, I would guess, as yes, opposed to go. Jenny, wipe your nose. That's not chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good Gordon Ramsay imitation. It was not bad, really, Gail. <laughs> I may use that in Vegas. BBC America has often given us good television. BBC America has also given us things that we don't understand because we're not British. Uh, the game, where does that enter into it with this six-part thriller? I think you might like it. Um, it stars the great Brian Cox. And when you, when you see him or looking up, you've seen him in a million things. It's set in 1972 in the Cold War, and British spies are trying to stop the KGB. Are they still the bad guys in our eyes, though? Uh, well, we have to flash back to 1972. Ah, that's kind of hard mean, to do. I because there is no Soviet Union anymore. And if there's a KGB now, we don't know about it. White collar, but ponder could be. White collar comes to USA on Thursdays. A lot of talk about it. It's the season premiere, and I have not seen it. I guess I should be because you want to talk about it. It's the last uh, season of that one too. I like the trend to wrapping shows up, announcing an end date, and having um, episodes that close everything out. That's really closure for you, and do you think really for the audience? But what if it's really good, Gail, and you well, want another season? Well, people are still going to be frustrated, but I think they're going to be less frustrated than if a show just ended right in the middle of a plot. You know, John mentioned this earlier. If you have longer seasons, really you are able to make more money in syndication. So is that not really a consideration anymore? It isn't so much a consideration anymore because shows go into reruns on cable Mm -hmm. long before they go into syndication like it used to be Mm -hmm. on the broadcast networks. So like White Collar that's been on for, I think this is its sixth season, um, 
has been every episode has been run hundreds of times already, so it's made plenty of money. Oh, yeah, I would have liked that closure on a couple things like Carnival and Deadwood. Deadwood. Would have... De- don't get me started. They promised <laughs> us a Deadwood movie. Where's my Deadwood movie? Yeah, and he left that to make John from Cincinnati about a surfer that might have been Jesus Christ. Who thought this was a good idea? It was a terrible idea, and and I just want to know what happened to the people on Deadwood. I guess I should let it go after all these years. I just saw Swearingen show up on another show, and sadly he wasn't a bad guy, but that was one of the most delicious villains that ever hit TV in my mind. It really was. Nine Lives of Christmas. Oh, it's time Christmas, for... There have already been two Christmas movies. Hallmark's the first two Christmas movies were on November 1st and 2nd. All right. And now here are two more. And this one comes from Hallmark. And boy, they make shows and movies like Sausage. They must make they must make a movie for a nickel. How can they afford to make so many? Well, because they hire people like Andy McDowell, who which I don't think are terribly expensive at this point in their career. But but look at the nine lives of Christmas. They had to hire a lot of cats, and that's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to mention the giant litter box backstage. Exactly, that was in the in the cats list of requirements. HBO again uh, with another selection. It is the comeback. It is Sundays at nine o'clock, and this is this is Lisa Kudrow's comedy, right? Right. It it was last seen nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Remember, it was she played actress Valerie Cherish, and she was trying to make a comeback by starring in a sitcom that she that was then being shot as a reality show. Um, and now nine years later, she's still tr- she's trying to make another comeback. It is a really funny show. It's kind of life imitating art. It's Lisa well, Kudrow. It's it's impossible for her not to be funny. Did you see la- last night, yesterday, on uh, Sunday morning, they had a profile? Yes, that, that was tied in with this, um, this the return of, of, of the, the comeback. Show. She also is a co-creator and executive producer of the show, because that's what she's been doing mostly since Friends went off the air, is that she's a producer. Pretty talented, actually. She it, really is. Let me she, ask. She was the brains of the Friends crew. She was the one who negotiated the contracts for all of them. But you know what's sad really? about Lisa Kudrow? That. She could go on to win an Academy Award, the Nobel Peace Prize, find a cure for cancer, and all anyone's going to ask her about is to sing Smelly Cat. Smelly Cat, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Pivot. Um, so let me ask you this, Gail. Do you think there is a real growing audience, perhaps, in, in the avenues outside of uh, of the traditional networks? You know, on Netflix and Amazon. Do, do you think a lot more people are going there? Much know? as I would like to deny it, because it gives me so much more <laughs> stuff I have to, to consider watch, to yes. review. Uh-huh. But absolutely, I do. Some of the best shows are on. Um, Netflix, and particularly in the last couple of years, Amazon Prime is doing some really amazing shows. And if we don't have those services, is there going to be any way to see those shows? I guess eventually they will come out on DVD. We will yeah. see. All right, what's the one show that uh, you uh, you earn your money the most watching, where it's just like, this is work, watching this show? You know, it's I only have to watch it once. <laughs> that's the really, that's the really best thing about it's it. And you know how much I hated Deborah Messing's The Mysteries of Laura. Get but up. what do I know? P- viewers took to it. Obviously, you know a lot because the Post Dispatch has named you Queen of the Television. TV Please, critic yes. Gail Pennington. Thanks for the time. Nice to visit with Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. I love talking TV. I'm not on it. And again, this is another one of my pet peeves that I went off on earlier when TV people go on vacation, they don't hire radio people to fill in. Yet. Here you are. I love talking TV. Either I, I'm on it, but I'm never watching it. But the adverse is true, and here we yeah. are on the radio talking about all these great shows, <laughs> and I never remember a time where on a television show they stopped to say, I don't know whether you heard this radio broadcast, but it was fascinating. It was interesting. They just don't... I say it all the time, John. Really? Yes. We're, we're going to be listening and find out. We've got to take a break. Uh, we will come back a lot more on the broadcast. David Stokes will be joining us from the Show Me Institute. Mike Kelly on some sports and uh, a lot of other things that I haven't quite figured out yet. It is 8.31. John Carney filling.